Hello. All right, Gary. Hi, James. How are you, my friend? I'm really good, mate. Right, welcome to another edition of Talking Wanderers. I think we're on episode eight now, I think. Um, yeah. Going to be slightly different tonight. Obviously, we're just doing it via Zoom, um, just for a, a few reasons. But uh, we wanted to just have a chat first, didn't we, about what's been happening at the club and some of the results and some of the games recently. So the first one, I think, because we didn't really speak about it, was York, wasn't it? York away. Did you yeah. watch that York one? York away. Did you watch the stream? I watched it. One? Yeah, I watched the stream and you went mm-hmm. to the game, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I went up that day. Yeah. And uh, it was it, it was really disappointing, really, because uh, especially, well, I won't, we're going to talk about the games that we've already come up, but if we had, if we started like we did in that game, like we last two games, we definitely would have got a result up there. And uh, yeah, it was just a very, very poor first half, wasn't it? And uh, they could have been three or four nil, I think, up. They could have been York. Uh, and then <laughs> we come out second half, obviously. Yeah, came out second half, and uh, sometimes you feel that the opposition are just taking their foot off the gas. You know what I mean? But yeah, we could have we could have got a draw with McShane from six seven yards out. But yeah, you were there, so you saw it live. And uh, yeah, how did you feel it went? Well, I mean, yeah, I was I was quite confident before the game. I I thought that yeah. we 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 looked a bit better, and um, it was a it was a big game, obviously against a team that were in a similar situation to us. Um, nice setup, I have to admit. Really nice setup up at York. Really nice ground. Very modern outside the city, um, in a sort of uh, leisure complex, uh, surrounded right. by shops and uh, bowling and cinema and things like that. And then in in amongst all that is a is a ground and a leisure centre next to it and stuff. But um, very nice uh, facilities. Really nice modern stadium and a very good playing surface as well. So they obviously, I think they play rug- uh, rugby there as well. Yeah, but I watched and, it. Um, I watched. You could probably yeah, see the. the uh, you could probably see the lines, couldn't you? Yeah, on the pitch. And um, but yeah, yes. you're right, Gaz. The, the first half we were we were really poor. We were overplaying at times. Um, a couple of sort of square balls into areas that we didn't want it to be. We were kind of we we almost gifted them a couple of chances with a couple of square balls and a couple of stray passes in the first half, and and their finishing wasn't great. And I know that some of their fans were saying, you know, if only they had a goal scorer. Because um, they got a lot of chances, didn't they? And they even they had one in the second half. Do you remember when we had an effort cleared off the line, and about yeah. thirty seconds later, the guy was clean oh, through at the other end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And he and he um, put it past the post. And and then, like you say, we we weren't out of it, and we did get one back. But I think if we'd ended up with a draw, it would have been a little bit unfair on them because they were in control for the majority of that game, and it was only when when we threw a couple of the subs on Bobby Joe Taylor and Dan Gallagher, that it sort of started to create a, create a little bit of um, chaos, really. It was nothing, there wasn't anything sort of too organised about it. It was just a bit of um, direct and getting some bodies in and around to try and cause a bit of um, sort of problems in and around their penalty area. Because when that did happen, obviously we scored from, I think, a corner that wasn't cleared properly and it came back in from like a second ball that came back in. That from prior, Dan, yeah. Yeah, prior, that Dan, yeah. Dan headed in front of the keeper. And um, then we got a couple more corners after that. And again, they didn't really clear them or deal with them properly. And it was a shame that we didn't force more set pieces and, and put more balls in the box because um, that possibly would have uh, created a few more chances. But... We moved on from that, didn't we? And then we moved on to uh, the back-to-back just, home games. Just that going we had at back home. to York. Just, just Go going on, back. Yep. Sorry, James. Just going back to York. Our away form uh, <laughs> past Watford <laughs> has been has been uh, very very poor. Uh, I put it down to. I could be well off mark here, but I put it down to that the lads have to travel up on the day. And I know they have to because we're not full time, and that is the other that's the other issue we have. We're not full time. But I just feel the lads travelling up in the morning, sitting on the coach, getting off, getting themselves up and going. Like they left at what, seven o'clock, someone you know, you left at seven o'clock. I think yeah. the team left at seven o'clock, some mm-hmm. of the players, you know, and you've got to travel up to York and it's yeah, hopefully next season if we're in this league that and I think it will change, no doubt. I think Mark will make you know that 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 would be one of the big changes. I feel. Do you? Yeah, I think I think you're right, mate. I think um, I don't think that 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 is uh, is an excuse. I don't really know 
you know, because I had this conversation with somebody recently, you know, there's lots of teams, not just us, but there's lots of teams, isn't there, historically and now that struggle away from home. You know, there's teams, mm. uh, where was it? Who was it? Oldham hadn't won away from home, had they, until they came yeah. to Meadowbank in January. So there are, <laughs> yeah. there are various reasons sometimes. And I guess if you knew the answer to that question, you'd be a brilliant uh, manager or manager in any kind of sport, mm. wouldn't you? If why, yeah. if, you're, if why your team couldn't perform away from home. I just... I just think over the last few years, we've made Meadowbank such a, um, not necessarily difficult for opposition teams to come and play there, but we we just feel so comfortable there, I think. You know, the players in that surroundings, the fans and everything at, at that ground, that it yeah. it kind of lends things in our, it, it put, tips the odds in our favour so much. Well, yeah, there. Mark does say that, doesn't he, in his interview at that, in this league, home support is is massive because yeah. the crowds are bigger. Like, yeah. you, you know, the crowds are like, most of crowds are 1,500 upwards, where, yeah. you know, you go to other leagues, obviously, and they, you might get, I don't know, 500, 600, or if it's a real big game, you might get 1,000. But in this yeah. league, the support is very, very good and well-supported, and the home home crowd, especially our one as well, does does help the home team. So maybe that is another factor in it as well. Yeah, I think it might be, you know, I think, because Mark said, didn't he, when he spoke to us about the impact that those crowds have sometimes, you know, even when it's just the big noise that opposition um, or the, the home fans will make when they get a corner or something like that, you know, it hasn't, mm. it's not a goal. It's just a set piece. And and the fans, mm. I mean, even to a certain extent, we witnessed it last night, didn't we? The South End fans, only briefly in the second half, did they really sort of generate any noise. But that was as the game yes. went on, when they were getting some corners in those yeah. in those far areas. You know, and you go away to places like Oldham, Wrexham, stuff like that, and they get a corner and the fans are all up, you know. And, mm -hmm. and it's the same similar sort of noise and reaction to as if a team has scored. You know, yeah, and it's yeah. and it, it must be it must be that sort of mental element where you've got to get that out of your head where nothing's actually happened. All it is is a set piece. It's not a yeah. goal. It hasn't yeah. anything. Nothing's happened against us. It's just the crowd are getting so up and so into it all and, and on their own team, you know, and, and geeing them up and getting them going that and it does yeah, generate definitely. a lot, of, generates a lot of noise. And you do witness it when you go to these grounds, you know, you especially when you're away and there's not masses of you, you you hear the noise erupting behind the goal or at one end and things like that, or around three sides of the ground when you're sort of packed in. Yeah, the other factor as well, our players haven't played in front of those sort of crowds. And obviously it must take no. a little bit of time to adjust, you know, when, when you go to these grounds. And uh, like I say, hopefully next season, when they if it happens and they do it, they will be able to adjust to those sort of things. And... Uh, yeah, that's that'd be another another plus for Dorking Wanderers. Yeah, definitely. Well, then we 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 didn't have any more travel after that game, did we? And then I know that the first team played a friendly at Eastbourne, and then we had Maidenhead at home, didn't we, on Saturday? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you were back down at that one, weren't you? And I was there as well. What did you make of that one, Gaz? I thought it was a great team performance. You know, uh, I just thought that someone said at York, it looked like. It looked like the team hadn't played together before. Mm -hmm. On that Saturday against Maidenhead, it looked like everybody was on the same page. They were working for each other, and it was a well, it was a super, it was a super performance and a result. It was just, it was a shame that we conceded that penalty. Uh, yeah. It was a real, real kick in the teeth, and you know, I'm not blaming Barry Fuller, but I just felt that if we had kept. If we get another like a clean sheet, that would have been a brilliant one because goal difference is going to come into factor, I think, a big time. But you know, it was a brilliant performance, team performance, some cracking goals as well, wasn't there? And uh, yeah. it was good to see Pryor get a couple as well because I feel he has been struggling of late. But to give him his fair dues, the balls haven't been coming in the box enough. And uh, it was a super corner for the first one. And yeah. then the East second was a lovely cross and he was in the centre of the goal and bang, he just put it away. So it was good to see that it was some, getting some service, wasn't it? Yeah, do you know, <clears throat> I really enjoyed it Saturday. It felt like Dorking Wanderers of old. It felt like that sort of team sw had that swagger and confidence about them a bit, like when we were in the National League South. And 
and some of those other divisions, you know, where we would just brush teams aside um, yeah. and just and just play them off the pitch, you know, and, and uh, yeah, it was just, it was so, it was a, a real throwback to some of our previous performances and how we played at home before. And, and I must admit, you know, I didn't, you know, with, with all due respect, I didn't think Maidenhead were, oh, no. were particularly impressive at all. Um, oh, I don't God. think they really had, generally, I'd said this again to somebody, you know, sometimes you can look at an opposition and think, oh, he's a decent player. He's a decent player. You know, you can see um, opposition players that have come out of the game with a bit of credit or someone that you would think, oh, he'd be quite good in our team. But there was nobody mm. that really stood out. And I think they would be disappointed, you know, the manager and the, and I think the assistant spoke afterwards and said how disappointing it was all round, really. Um, but yeah, it was so good to see, as you said, Gaz, the, the first goal was a brilliant corner and a brilliant run to the near post as well and it was it was it was nice to see Jason doing that um and getting some reward for it because I must say that since he has come back yes he hasn't been you know hugely prolific but he has been doing a lot of um work all over the pitch you know and I and I do think that um as we'll, we'll discuss in a bit when we talk about the defensive side of things I think he's in part helped with that Definitely, yeah. Coming back oh, and yeah. defending set pieces, Especially and set things like plays. That. Yeah, set plays. He's been like, yeah. Last night, for example, he was, he was, you know, he was massive at defending corners and that. And uh, it's a big part of the game. Set plays are a big part of the game. And uh, he was doing more, like you just said, he was doing more work defensively most of the time than he has uh, been attacking because he hasn't had much service. And I was, I didn't realise that he hadn't played national league level. Oh. I thought he had. But he hasn't. So it's a step no, but up. But bizarrely, him. he has actually played. Um, I think he played League Two for AFC Wimbledon, and that was where he got his leg broken against Crawley. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, fair enough then, because I was going to say because the defenders in this league are good defenders, most of them, and uh, and that they're good in the air. They win a lot of headers, and uh, you know, he, he. It's not like you just said earlier. It's not like. You know, in the in national league south and those sort of leagues where he's he's, he's taller, he's, he's stronger, and he's and he wins a lot of headers. In this league, mm-hmm. it's all about timing and just making those like we just you just said the perfect run across the near post and getting in front of your defender and uh, yeah and your marker. And but yeah, no, it was good to see him get two goals. I have a little bit. I don't like the term. I'm getting. <clears throat> what's the word? I don't want to. It's not winding me up, but the Dorking way. I don't <laughs> like that term anymore. I think, I think what has gone on in the past is gone on, and it's got us where we are now. And now we have to forget about the Dorking way. In my opinion, it's only my opinion, and I bet a lot of people probably disagree with me. But I just feel that the Dorking way. Every game's different, so. You know what I'm saying? We just have to play the team, the opposition we're playing. We just have to play them. And if we can pass the ball and make lovely triangles and score three cracking goals, brilliant. But if we can't, we just have to grind out a result. And that is that is not Dawkins way. That is football. But that's my opinion. That's yeah, but, um, the day. Yeah, well, I know. But Gaz, um, in, in, to back that up then, because we can move that on nicely to last night, because that wasn't a typical Dawkins performance last night, was it? Against no. South End, you know, South End came to Meadowbank last night. Yes, they weren't in great form. They've obviously they'd obviously lost six in a row, and uh, lots of off the pitch issues going on at the club. And I know they've got several injuries and stuff, but but that last night was not a typical Dawkins way or Dawkins type performance. But it was so good. It was so. Exactly. It was so good. It was. It was what other teams do. In this yes. league, week in, week out, you know, 100%. and and the foundations of that were built upon such solid defending and such. So there was numerous things that stood out for me last night. So first of all, it was uh, the same eleven and the same bench, which has been really rare this season. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not uh, sure no times, <laughs> no changes of the formation, no changes of the lineup through injury or anything whatsoever. And I think that speaks volumes for. The players can go again, you know, t- literally two, three days later, having played that that initial game um, and and just rested for a couple of days before then getting out and playing again against South End. And so that was one 
major plus. Another another really good thing that I thought last night was that the shape of the of Dawkins team and the work rate was unbelievable. So you probably noticed this as well, but the sort of the, the defensive shapes and positions we got into made it impossible for them to play. There were periods of play where they had the ball yeah. for ages and ages and ages. And that's fine because it was all in front of us and it wasn't hurting us. And you knew that if you were just patient enough, they were going to give it back to us because they yes. kept trying to play an overambitious pass or something into the centre forward, which bounced off him. The amount of times that the ball ran through to Dan Lincoln, I lost count of because yeah. it, they were overhitting yeah. passes. We were we were getting to a really good shape where they couldn't get in behind us really at yeah, all. In the and holes. The, no, they couldn't at all, could they? They couldn't find any little bits of space. Because, okay. And that was even before we'd scored. That wasn't even something we were doing once we'd mm. scored. Before we'd mm. scored, we'd had some good chances, but our shape was so much better. We weren't being pulled out of position. We weren't leaving ourselves wide open. Um, all across the pitch, everybody was doing their job. So where I stand near the dugouts, Jimmy Muir in the first half was very wide. Franken was very close to him as well. And they were keeping an eye on uh, Ralph, their captain. The only time anything kind of changed was when the guy, the free man at the back, started Lomas. to bring it out. Yeah, Lomas. Lomas. Um, yeah. A lot of their supporters were saying he was one of the few. Him and the goalkeeper were about two of the only players that came out of the game with any credit because he tried to step forward, didn't he, with the ball a few times Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. because he was sort of spare. Um, but again, by the time he did that, the shape was again so good that he couldn't really lay it with any sort of um, effect. It didn't affect anything at all. Um, no, definitely. And it, and, it, and it just felt, you know, bar a few sort of late flurries with corners and stuff. And I know there was a couple of late penalty shouts, but they were mainly from their fans rather than from, their, from players their fans, or anything. Not from their supporters, no, not, from, not, the players, not, from, not, not from, from the players. Not from the players. It wasn't, they weren't yeah. any kind of big protests to the referee or anything. No. And I must say, I thought the referee was quite good last night as well, actually. He was he was pretty good, that referee last night. He let quite a lot flow, I thought. He did. He let, he he let, let the game flow. He let the game flow quite nicely. Um, but yeah, that last night was just so good. And I think that, that about that, the shape, Talking yeah. of, sorry, talking about the shape, but you're spot on. I because I was obviously doing a commentary and I was watching it. And one time we had five across the back. Yeah. So Jimmy Muir has come back. Yeah. And tucked in. And yep. so you had Frankham in there. And then you had, I think, Dan Gallagher just sitting in front of the mm -hmm. back. And then all the whole team had come back in a four. Yeah. And so and it prior was in midfield as well. So yep. as you were saying. There was no way they could put the ball in between that, those two lines no. and and break us down and uh, and like you said, they, all they kept doing was going left to right, like we used to do, left yeah. to right, left to right. And yeah. uh, I thought the team again, it was such a it was such a great team performance. That, uh, and it makes me laugh. And <laughs> in Mark's uh, in Mark's uh, post match interview, he said to me, "I know it's not pretty." I know it's not pretty, but did anybody leave early last night? No. no. Were the supporters disappointed because Dawkins won one nil and kept a clean sheet? No. The oh. supporters and everybody was happy because we've got two wins on the bounce. And yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not sure whether the pennies dropped for Mark, but that was one of the best defensive uh, uh, performances I've seen this season from Dawkins and now uh, now they've got to go away at Dagenham and Redbridge and do the, exactly the same thing for me. Yeah, and, and I completely agree, Gaz. We've had lots of games this season where maybe individuals have kept us in it. Notts County leaps out on that one where Dan Lincoln had the game of his life and Dan Gallagher as well. You know, but last night, the whole team, back to front, uh, front to back, everybody defended so resolutely and that's what you look for because... They didn't really have a chance of note. Not really Nothing. a chance. There was one in the first half where a ball got crossed in and the guy was approaching it on the back post, as you were. Oh, Mooney. Mooney. And he left foot, but it ended up, his technique Going was sideways. wrong and it went yeah. sideways. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mooney. Where yeah. he sort of popped up in the box and he was running onto that cross. But other than that, you know, there was very little. And I think that, well, that that's testament to the coaching and I think it's got to be the personnel as well. And there's one person that's kind of standing out in 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 amongst all that, isn't there? And Tony Craig. 
yeah, he just jumps out at you. He, he's old fashioned, you know. I'm an old fashioned person as a football wise, and I am. I, I'm that's that's how I've been brought up, and I like that way of football. So, but uh, he jumps out and uh, he organises everybody. He gives people a rollicking when, like, the ball come back too quick a lot sometimes last night. Like, Pryor might have had a bad touch, Ottawa might have had a bad touch, and he gave him a rocket. You know, and then you can see they put their hands, I hate that, but they put their hands up and said, OK. But, yeah. you know, you you have to do that. And his positioning, he reads the game so well. He gets into the position. He, he marks the near post if a cross is coming in. And he he's there first. And uh, he's good in the air. Yeah, listen, mate, we're not smoking. We're not blowing smoke. But at the end of the day, we say what we see. And uh, he has been a... Re- and, and I think and I think George Frankham as well. I know, I know yeah. Craig has been... A big, a big, big uh, plus in that defence. But you know, Franken played right back last night, right over the three, and he was very solid. And yeah. uh, and even Cookie, young Cookie, playing on the left when he's a right back and a centre half. You know, it must be so. And Lincoln in goal, you mustn't forget Lincoln either because he's part of the defence. That mm-hmm. those four, you know, in the last few weeks, well, not last few weeks, but the last couple of games have been so organised. <laughs> You know, and I, I put that down to Craig. To be fair, I do put that yeah. down to Tony Craig, yeah. and uh, yeah, so uh, brilliant. You know, he's he's done wonders in the defence, and you know, I hope it, hope it stays going. You know what I mean? To the end of the season. Yeah, I agree. Is it exactly what you said there, Gaz? I was having this conversation as I left the ground with my stepdad last night. His reading of the game is so good, and I don't think you can ever overstate how important that is. He was as that. As that central defender of the three, he was he just gives himself a yard. You watch sometimes, he'll just take maybe one step, two steps backwards because he's mm. already read the flight of the ball or he's anticipating it being flicked. And he, he just seems to be mm. in that right place to then be able to pick that up and either just clip it down the line or go left to right because he's got those options. Or a couple of times he did last night, just put his foot through it and just cleared his lines. A couple Definitely. of really good things he did as well. He just glanced a couple of headers nicely back to Dan, didn't he, yeah. as well. Um, mm. Took the sting out of opposition attacks. He, he he doesn't, he's not one of those players that throws himself in at stuff. He just nope. does what he needs to do. He just he very never solid. dives in. No, he's very solid. Very He sort of stands there and it's it's like playing as like a sweeper and it's per, it seems to be a perfect role for him, really, uh, because it gives him the opportunity to then be able to read the game because he hasn't yeah. specifically got a marking job to do on any of their um, defenders. But he's not massive in height, but he seems to get up really well for the headers. And and he's being complimented really well, I think, by Cook and Frankham in that three. Yeah. And and like you say, Gaz, as well, with Dan as well, because I think he's been really good in the last few weeks. His handling was really impressive last oh. night on a, yeah. on a sort of a drizzly night where the ball could skip on and uh, a mm. couple of uh, late, uh, corners and long throws into the box. He was really assured with those. There was one in particular that stood out where he came up over the top of quite a few players and caught yes. it as well. And and yeah. those sort of things of what you've wanted to see from him for quite a while. So I thought every every single player that was out on that pitch last night gave absolutely everything. And I think you could see that when that game ended, how he, not just last night, but backing up Saturday's good performance with though a, a similar one last night. As well, yeah, definitely. Also, the other thing with uh, with Tony is, I feel that he's he's aggressive, not not in a not in a nasty way, but he's aggressive. No. And I bet you, if you ask every centre forward we've been played against, they would say, "Yeah, I know, I've been in the game uh, yeah. against." Fair, you know, maybe he's not like Ed Harris. Might not be in his manner, uh, in his in his in his makeup to be like that because he, he does win a lot of headers, uh, Harry. Uh, Harris, I beg your pardon, but uh, he seems to be more grappling with the. Craig seems to grapple more with the centre half and put them under pressure, and uh, we didn't have that. Well, we have never had that this season until he's turned up. So yeah, listen, you know, and they were got. And what other thing I did like about last night? There was a few shots outside the box, and they got blocked. People were throwing their body mm-hmm. on the line and getting their body hit with the ball, which I think yeah. that is. So I haven't seen that either for this season. So yeah, listen, mate, loads of pluses last night and Saturday. And I just hopefully uh 
uh, and I keep saying it, I know I do, it's in our own hands at the end of the day, which is the best thing about it. It's in yep. our own hands and, you know, and the way things are going at the moment, hopefully we can just carry on with that uh, form and desire and uh, we come up with, you know, we do, we do the business. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't, I don't nervously look too much at how the other teams are getting on in and around us at the moment because we've won our last two games and that's all all we should be sort of thinking about, you know. And if if we do look at the uh, the end of the night and see that other results have gone our way, then so be it. But I'm not sort of looking and thinking, oh no, you know, Torquay are winning as they did last night or Gateshead are winning as they did last night because I think it's just. As you say, it's in our own hands, and our performances have been enough to to get us two really good wins recently. Exactly. And we move on to we Dagenham got... on we move on to Dagenham on Saturday, which I think is another game that we we could win. We we could oh, go 100%. there full of confidence. Yeah, 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 definitely. Obviously, they got a, got a bit of a tanning last night away at, away at uh, Gateshead, which is a bit of a, I don't, again, I'm, I'm not sure whether they went up on the day or whatever, but that's a fair old journey on a Tuesday night. And uh, yeah. and they got a smashing 3-0 uh, yeah. loss, wasn't it? And yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, listen, well, we beat them. What did, what was the score? We beat them. 5-1. Uh, was 5-5, five, five, was yeah, it? 5-1. Five, 5-1, five, five, one. Five, yeah. one, you know, and, yeah. you know, that. And they've, well, they've lost a few of their players as well because Ranch... Ranch uh, is one. Not, is it Ranch or Rance or Rance? Rance one of the yeah. pl- Rance. He's left. He's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the forward's yeah. gone as well to Notts County. Um, Maurice. Yeah, jun- Junior Maurice. Yep. Yeah. And but I know they got Effingon. Effingon. Effingon's so coming from Aldershot. Yeah. Yeah, he's been banging a few goals in, but they haven't lost a. They lost a couple of major players, Dagenham and Redbridge, and mm-hmm. obviously they've got a new manager. And uh, yep. yeah, listen. I'm quietly confident. I'm quietly confident. So hopefully that will, uh, they will play as the performances of the last two games will rub off. And I want to see him do it away. That's what I want yeah. to see. I want to see in a good, like it was at Woking. I want to see yeah. a good away, away uh, performance and hold mm-hmm. out. And if they get a draw, they get a draw. If they can nick a win, they nick a win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I completely agree, Gaz. I think we can go there full of confidence this weekend with our tails up and, um, and and take the game to them because they've been conceding quite a few goals recently as well. And I think some of their fans said that they they were missing a few players through injury. Obviously, a new manager's come in. It's not it's not his team, is it? He's just having to inherit the team uh, and work mm. with what he's got. There's no there's no wriggle room now to bring in any other players. So he's got to just work with what he's got. Um, so yeah, I think we go there full of confidence. And I think that. As Mark said to you the other day, he's, cha- he's just got to challenge, challenge Dawkins players to win every game. Win every game from Ooh. now on. Yeah, win every definitely. game. You know, got seven games left. Challenge them. Can you win all of those games? You know, really mm. give them that challenge. You know, I'm sure Saturday, Tuesday was a challenge. Can you get six points from these two home games? And they've answered that. So the next challenge is, can you go away to Dagenham on Saturday, back that up again and get another three points? Yeah. You know, so, I think there'll be um, some changes. I think there might be some changes in the team. I think because uh-huh. obviously Cook took a whack on the nose. I'm not sure where mm-hmm. he broke it. I'm not sure about that. But he's, I think Fuller might come in instead of him. And I think, me personally, I think uh, Jimmy Mewitt might might set down okay. for because he's played two games and and he that, he's he's been working so hard and. Uh, I think he's definitely up there for player of the season. He is Jimmy Muir because I think he's had a great season. Yeah. And uh, I just think I just yeah. think he might be a little bit tired on Saturday, mm-hmm. and you might bring Wheeler back in or someone like that, or yeah, probably possibly. Joe Taylor yeah. or someone like that. But yeah, yeah that's my possibly. feeling on Saturday. Yeah. But no, yeah. looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that should be good. And then we've got the Easter games, haven't we? Woken at home, which is actually Woken's next game, I think, because I don't think they've got a game this weekend. So I think that's Woken's next game. Yeah, because um, the FA Trophy's on, isn't it, this Of course, weekend? yeah. So, uh, I think, yeah, they were due to play one of the semi-finalists for that, I think. So, yeah, we've got Woking, obviously, on Good Friday at home, which should be uh, a good occasion. Um, Meadowbank, hopefully, should be packed. I think it's all ticket. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we could be looking at a big number uh, on that day uh, yeah, over definitely. the Easter weekend and then going down to Yeovil on Easter Monday as well. Yeah, so, lots of games... That. Lots Number of games, lots of lots of lots of winnable games, and and I, you know it's about momentum, isn't it? And we do seem to have some momentum now with a sort of settled side, and 
some of the you know the long term injuries we know about, but there doesn't seem to be quite as many niggles kicking around now. There was a lot of the 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 squad players, a lot of them were out on the pitch doing the fitness stuff last night, which was good to see. Um, mm. People that you know can't get in the squad at the moment, but that's not to say they couldn't suddenly be called upon for Saturday. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, no. it's, it's 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 feeling much more positive. Yeah, definitely. Yep, looking forward to it, mate. Looking forward to Saturday and then the Christmas uh, Easter period. You know. Yep. But then before you know it, the season's what we said. You said there's seven games left. There'll be three games gone. You know what I mean? And then we'll be looking at the last month because there's so many games in April. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah that's eight. Then yeah. then it ends in April, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, all good, mate. It's all good in the do- in the Dorking Wanderers Garden at the moment, isn't it? All rosy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's looking that way a little bit, but yeah, yeah. And and um, <laughs> good attendance last night as well. That was the other thing I wanted to mention. Over two thousand two hundred, over five thousand, over five hundred South End fans on a Tuesday night coming up to Dorking uh, to stand out, and the the away end hasn't got a roof or anything yet, so they got a little bit wet. Some of them behind that goal, but visually it looks so much better, doesn't it? At the ground now as well, when you can see that away end packed and it's and it's that staggered, so people can actually see as well. Yeah. Um, no, it was good. I, you know, you got to take the light off the South End and the lights, and the lights better yeah. as well. Yeah, they weren't too bad, actually. I don't know if it was still dark over the other side, but I, I thought, yeah, they, they looked okay, the lights. But like I say, you know, South End supporters come in on a Tuesday night when they've had all these problems off the pitch. They they lost six games on the spin. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You think, oh, can I bother to go there? I'll watch it yeah. on telly. i watch the stream yeah. and all that. And uh, and But, you know, you've got to take your hat off to them. And they, yeah, I know they didn't make much noise, but... You know, you, but you got to stay well done and thanks for coming to Dorking Wanderers because, you know, yeah. they're putting money in the coffers. And, uh, yeah, thanks very much for coming, South End. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And let's hope that we play them again next season because I enjoyed going down to their ground as well and that they still, yeah. obviously, that they still have a club. Um, definitely. Because that's, you know, that's so important as well. Yeah. yeah. Right, Gaz, we'll wrap this first bit up, shall we? Yeah, we, definitely, we're mate. Gonna, yep. We're going to get our guest in and we're going to go a bit retro. Um, and um, we'll speak to Ian. Um, and we're going to just t- chat a little bit about uh, the old Dorking Football Club, uh, and Ian's sort of memories of going there and watching Dorking, and how things are um, now with uh, the um, new ground and the new club and everything there on the site as well. So we'll 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 stop this one and then we'll speak to Ian sh- very shortly. Okay, mate. Right, welcome back to Talking Wanderers. We've got a guest with us now. Uh, Ian, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm Ian, Ian Murray. I'm a, a Dorking, uh, Dorking boy born and bred. Um, I, uh, so I grew up in Dorking, was in Dorking until I was 21, 22, moved away to Hertfordshire. Kind of discovered the Wanderers kind of probably three, four years ago again, having been a been a follower of, of Dorking FC as a, as a child up until me... Uh, it's sort of early, uh, early adult life. Excellent. So that was what that was what I was we wanted to sort of talk about, really, because obviously, in in the last two weeks or so, Wanderers, Dorking Wanderers, made the uh, made the offer to buy Metabank, and by all accounts, it's kind of being approved, and and it'll probably be going through. And there's lots of things to sort of finalise with that, but. Um, but obviously, you would have been going down there as a child. So, what were your earliest memories of Meadowbank going down there to watch Dorking Football Club? Then, Ian, I, I remember I, I was talking about it with with my son over dinner. So he, he's fifteen and and massively into football, um, playing, watching, and, and Royston Town. There are um, you know local non league teams, so they play in the Southern League. So yeah, kind of two steps yeah. below. And um, and for and for him. It's second nature. If you know he wants to go and watch them, he looks it up on Twitter or he goes on the website or whatever. So my earliest memories of going to watch Dorking are with my dad, probably when I was seven, eight years old, something like that. So we're going back probably to the kind of early, early eighties, mid eighties, and never knowing from one week to the next whether there was actually a game on. So <laughs> what I can remember more than anything is having to wait until a Saturday getting a copy of the Dawkins Advertiser, then there used to be a fixture section in the back of that. So the mm-hmm. first thing every Saturday morning was going to the fixture section, seeing if Dawkins FC were at home, and then if they were, dragging my dad out and going down there and, and watching them with him. And, then, and obviously, 
I think we, were either of you two down there back in, back in the day? Were you watching or involved like, yeah. at that point? Yeah, yeah, I used to go and watch yeah. them as well, Ian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the so the green and white hoops and mm-hmm. um, a meta bank, you know, to to me is kind of now as it was then. I'm a, I've only been physically to the ground to to watch Wanderers once, but I've been and walked around. My dad still lives in in Dorking, so uh, you know every time mm-hmm. we come down. Like I go and have a little walk around the ground, and and actually the feel of the place to me, the kind of spirit of it, is pretty much the same now as it was, you know, mm-hmm. back sort of 30, 35 years ago. So in in that sense, not a lot, lots changed. But for me, yeah, that's that's where it started. Saturday mornings, talking out, were they at home? If they were, straight down there with my dad on the on the Saturday afternoon. Does your dad come along now? Does that still come? Does he come to Dorking or not? He came, so the, the, the only game, we, we live in Hertfordshire, so it's... Yeah, but your dad lives in Dorking still, doesn't he? Dad lives in Dorking, yeah. And uh, he, to be fair to him, he, he's he's a big sportsman, but he's, he's not a huge football fan. So oh, the, the only game that I've been to that in, in person was the um, the FA Cup game against... Um, oh, who was Eastleigh. Um, Eastleigh. Eastleigh, that's right, yeah, yeah. So I was... By chance, I was down in Dorking for that weekend uh, with him. So that game, I went with my dad, um, with my nephew, who lives it, it was um, over in Rygate, my best mate, who I was t- to school with in Dorking. So it was a bit of a, you know, generations together, and, and he came along, and he loved it. And, um, you know, he, he, he'll watch football, and he'll he'll keep a bit of an eye out, but he's not a football fan, but uh, but he loved it, yeah, and he'll, he'll go back, and, and I'll be able to drag him back again next time I'm down. So, yeah, he came along, yeah, definitely. So when What's you used to thought go, about sorry James, sorry James. So when you used, when you used to, oh, when you used to go and watch when you used to go and watch Dawkins back in them days then Ian, can you remember where you used to sit and who your sort of were there any sort of Dawkins yeah. players that you sort of thought, oh, he's really good and, and the like the local the local players that you were the sort of like a fan of? Yeah, yeah. So the one the one that stands out for, for me was uh, I don't know if you remember Steve Lunn. Yeah, um, yeah, I thought you were going <laughs> to say him. Yeah, Lanny. Yeah, <laughs> and he didn't. Did he end up being a manager for a bit as well? Yeah, with his brother. Yeah, with Andy oh, Rusty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So he, he was the one who, at that age, s- stood out for for me. So when we went down there, we were. It was him. You know, the, he he was the name. And mm-hmm. um, and I, I don't was it, I don't know how he must have been fairly local. Must have, I don't know where he where he, he was actually from. So looking back on it, um, he's the one I, I remember. And we used to go and watch on um, what would be behind, well, the, I don't know if the dugouts were still on that side now, but where they are now, mm-hmm. then that's where, where we stood. So on that side of the ground, like, then, you know, when, when you're kids, you're kind of behind the goals, aren't you? So we used to be behind the goal that we were attacking mm-hmm. every week. Like, yeah. Switch at half time, go down to the other end. And um, so it was it was Lund that, Steve Lund that, that stood out. And I don't know how, how long he was there for. Martin Skinner, do you remember Martin Skinner? Yeah, um, yeah, yep, uh, yep. So Justin, Sk- he, Justin Skinner's brother. That's right, yeah. So I went to school with Justin. Okay. And, uh, but Justin was a year, two years older than, than me. And Martin was another sort of year or two older, older than that. So he was another kind of one that we knew locally that, that you went to watch. Like, so uh, so those were, were sort of two of the names. And then a little bit later on, I kind of I went away and, and went to university and then and then came back and that's when I started going down there kind of again after a bit of a gap and um, and I can remember I don't know what his surname was but they had a um, he was a, a centre forward as well and a, a bloke called Junior like but his what his surname was I, I can't remember at all but I can remember him. Mm-hmm. for a season seemingly banging him three or four goals a game he, he was all <laughs> over the place right? and um, so he's he's one that's that stood out and um but at, at that point they you know they they must have been on the you know the, on the down because there was a point wasn't there where there was that fa cup run with with plymouth that year yep. and i think i don't know if there was a promotion at around the same sort of time and yep. then all all of a sudden, there was a real sort of slump, wasn't there? And they and dropped mm-hmm. down, and, it, and and I don't know how far down. I think it was was it Ryman League back then. Well, they ended up they ended up sort of right down into the combined counties. 
Um, and then when yeah. when when Medibank got sort of condemned, they had to ground share at Hawley, and they really lost um, any sense of kind of being in and around the town because Wanderers were in the ascendancy, and and Dorking Football Club they kind of by past each other. Yeah, well, yeah, in different directions. Well, yeah. well I, I can remember it, it, at some point, you know, when they were they were pretty much in in free fall, weren't they? Really, mm-hmm. and, yeah. uh, and and I can remember going down there with my mate, but Nathan, he, he still he lives Red Hill now, but he, he's regularly there watching the Wanderers, and and a league game they played then, talking, and it was against um, Whitstable. So it's okay. Kent, is it Whitstable? yeah, Kent side, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and so there were literally at that game there were two of us in the crowd. So it was me and Nathan, right. and that was it. Right. Wow. So you know that's that's how low mm-hmm. it's it got. So you had the you know look, looking back on it, the the times that I had there, you had the massive highs of that cup game against Plymouth, yep. down to that when there were two people in in the crowd, and yeah. um, and then another sort of point that I, I remember, I, I don't know if it was in the same season. As, as the um, cup game against Plymouth, but do you, it was the year that Coventry, or the, the year after, so Coventry won the cup, mm-hmm. FA Cup, yeah, and then the next year Sutton knocked them out of the yep, cup. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yep. I was there. Then. Like, we're there, yeah. Like, yeah. And then I think I think it might have been. It was only a week or two after Sutton had knocked Coventry out of the cup that Dawkins FC had Sutton in the Surrey Senior Cup. Mm-hmm. And um, and there was a big big crowd down there for that, you know, b- because of what Sutton had done a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago, and uh, and then Dawkins then knocked Sutton out the Surrey Senior Cup, and there there must have been I, I don't know how many, but there must have been seven or eight hundred probably I would have thought mm-hmm. down there for for that game. So it wasn't quite on the same scale <laughs> as the um, you know, as that as that Plymouth game, but that was another sort of standout moment when I yeah. when I kind of think of it. Yeah. You had people down there who, who wouldn't normally have been down there just no. just for the spectacle, just the event. So, yeah, uh, yeah some you know some really good times looking back on it. Definitely. Do you feel uh, Dorking Wanderers have put Dork the town on the map? Do you, I don't know what you, if your dad feels that it's, it's beneficial. The town has benefited from it. Totally, yeah. And and you know when I, I talk to my dad, you know most weeks and. Um, and he's always he, he knows you know what they're up to. He knows the news about the club. He says you know when when he goes to the town, he sees the kids in the tops. He sees the the hoardings. You know he reads the paper. And uh, and where I am, you know, in some Hertfordshire, so he's not a million miles away, but you know we're we're closer to sort of Cambridge than anywhere else. That's a good couple of hours away. And even round here, um, you know, if I talk about the Wanderers, then people know what I'm talking about and, and who I'm talking about. And um, oh, and so a hundred percent is is put the town on the map. I, I think like and uh, you know I've I've said to people before you know when they've asked me what you know where you're from talking oh right yeah talking the wanderers like so <laughs> it's it is amazing isn't it really yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was I was gonna I was gonna ask you that Ian do you sort of tell people do you sort of sort of tell people with a bit of pride really that that's your sort of it's my hometown team and stuff and I always yeah. kind of follow how they're getting on and everything. Hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah, and um, and then w- w- weirdly, I, d- I don't. You, you probably wouldn't, you know, have any reason to know about it. But I'd been in touch with the um, uh, with with the club a couple of weeks ago to see if like Mark would may. Because I'm a teacher, mm-hmm. and um, so to see if Mark would be willing to do a little chat with the kids at, at school. Because we we try to get one football manager in a year to do an assembly just to you know talk about how you know the values on a, on a football pitch can be mm-hmm. translated to success in, in whatever you do and obviously you know kids are going to relate to people like him and uh, and um, you know managers players whatever more than perhaps they do you know the adults that they normally mm-hmm. work with and mm-hmm. uh, and it it's transpired through that arrangement and me having to work with the deputy head at the school that um, that she's from Dawkin as well. I went to school with her. I didn't have a clue. <laughs> uh, and, and her brother-in-law is a season ticket holder. Uh, so. <laughs> wow! Wow! Uh, wow. Yeah. So what? You know, it, it's brought out all sorts of weird little connections and and yeah. links. Like, and had it not been for you know that idea and that conversation with the club about getting Mark in and me having to go through her to see if we could arrange a date. 
I would never have known that, she, you know, we've worked together for three or four years. So I don't, <laughs> <laughs> never asked her where she's come from. Like, I was in, I was in the same year at school as, as her brother. Like, so on lots of different levels, like, you know, that involvement with the club has, has you know, brought out all sorts of different kind of links and, and, yeah. um, and connections. And actually, uh, you know, again, we were talking about it at, at dinner uh, this evening, but, um, but I don't, so that, the Plymouth Argyle game, um, <laughs> I don't know if, you, the guy called Steve Castle, so he was, he was a Plymouth um, player, so he played in, in that Plymouth team um, that day. Yeah. And he's now the manager of Royston Town here. Um, oh wow! Um, like, yeah, yeah. So I've had a few <laughs> chats with him, like about that day, saying to him, "Do you know what, Steve? Like, you know, I know, I know him fairly well, you know, nowadays. But it, it, that's quite bizarre to think that you know he, he was coming towards the end of his pro career. Uh-huh. I was sort of, I don't know, fifteen, sixteen, something like that. You know, like so. It's a bizarre thought really you know that um i was there in a crowd like watching him playing at Meadowbank, and now 30 years later we're here both involved with royston town right uh, and um and he's got you know real memories of of that game and, and that day because it you know for them even it was a it was a it's for any league club isn't it you know going to a non-league club for, for an yeah. Club game it's a, a dodgy away day isn't it so um yeah yeah, yeah. that was wow amazing amazing so yeah, what school did you yeah. go to in Dorking then, Ian? Did you go to Ashcombe? No, I went to Sons. Oh, Sons good man. Yeah, that's where I yeah. went. Oh, did you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're probably, probably a year, a couple of years younger than me, I would, I would have thought. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm um, always great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I went there all the way all the way through, yeah. So, uh, play, you know, played a good bit of football there. So I did Mr. Charles, Mr. Llewellyn, I don't know if you remember. Yeah. Were they, yeah. They both there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All, all of them, yeah. So, um yeah, so you know, and and, and for me, um, you know, one of the big things, and I've said it on sort of Twitter quite a lot, but it, you know, Dawkins, where where I'm from, and that's I, I identify as as coming from Dawkins. You know, we're Royston, it, you know, it's a great town. It's I've lived here for for twenty years, but I'm not from Royston in the same mm-hmm. way as most of the people you know here are. So yeah. the wanderers have have actually done a massive amount for me in terms of sort of reconnecting with Dawkins. Wow. Uh, so beyond just the football I- itself, it's it's kind of given me that sort of identity, if you like, with with the place that, that I come from. So it's it's been massive for me having sort of kind of discovered them and and getting involved a little bit. So you wow. are, are you in Roy- are you involved with Royston, are you? Royston Town. Are you involved yeah, with them? Only with the, the only with the sort of youth Set up. So I, yeah, I am. So I, I coach um, one of the under fifteen teams. I've, I've played a little bit with their vets team, and um, you know, and because you know, we obviously by the time we finish matches on a Saturday, I just can't get down for three o'clock on a on a Saturday to to, to Dorking. So I tend to go. And, I tend to go and watch Royston, listen to you at the same time, Gaz. So I've got two two games going on at once. <laughs> 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 and send tweets that James might read, so it's uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> so you have got you have got some listeners then, Gary. <laughs> yeah, got, yeah, they've got one in Royston. That's Andy. <laughs> yeah, I normally I normally log on on about three or four different phones, Gaz, to give you a bit of a boost. Like. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that again, I I love it. I you know I, I enjoy that that commentary. I think it's it's a real you know I know a lot of clubs that. that at that level have got it haven't they but um but again you know for, for someone like me who, who physically can't get to the games unless it's a a very sort of rare one-off again that gives a real link to it and it and yeah. it brings it to life so I, I really you know appreciate the work that you do and um and just having the opportunity to to sort of be in touch with it you know, because I'll, I'll follow it on on Twitter, and it and it's good to get the updates. But it, you're that step removed again, aren't you? Whereas if you're actually there listening to it, then that, for me that's the next best thing to to be in there and and actually watching. No, thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, not at all, not at all. Thank you. So yeah, Steve Lunn was was that kind of figurehead when you were going to watch Dawkins, and that was probably the same for me actually because he was like a local boy as well um, right, yeah. from the town, and 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 he was like the 
the the the sort of the best player in that team, really. You know, um, scored a lot, of, scored a lot of goals, and he was a fan's favourite, and and people could identify with him because he was just a local fellow playing non-league football and stuff like that. Is there somebody that that plays for Wanderers now that you sort of like think, oh, he's a good player, or that's somebody that I know we're obviously of an age now where we don't really have heroes, but somebody that sort of uh, like you think is sort of stands out in that Wanderers team. You, you, you can pick him. I mean, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because of the... I think when you look back on, on what Dalton FC was, it was much more hit and miss, wasn't it? It was obviously much more amateur in, in those days. And it, yeah. and it was people sort of playing for, for fun, wasn't it? So there was a probably more of a, a spread, wasn't there, of, of talent and a spread of, of ability and, and standards. And it's obviously you haven't quite got the same thing um now have you but i think jimmy probably jimmy knew it like mm-hmm. I, I i really like the way that, that he plays and mm-hmm. um so he he would be one um a hundred percent that mm-hmm. um no if, if i was you know my, my boy plays out out wide and um and i would probably say um right just watch that and <laughs> uh you know <laughs> and uh and take a bit from that. So he would be one that, that springs to mind, definitely. Yeah. 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 Definitely. And well, Briggs, no doubt when when Briggs is fit and he was flying down the wing. Because you cannot be a winger beating his man, getting to the byline, putting a lovely cross in, and prior coming at the far post, nodding <laughs> it home. You can't beat that football, can you? Well, it's simple, it's old fashioned, but it's that's all it takes, isn't it? Like, and if yeah, if you've got two blokes, one on either side doing that, then you know that's a that's a decent formula. You stand a chance. You stand yeah. a chance, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I'll do. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you if you press me, then I'd I'd say yeah, Jimmy. You know, yeah. this I've, I've been really you know impressed in what I've seen of, with what I've seen of him. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, he's excellent, had a good season. Excellent. I must yeah. admit, he has he has had a good season. Funny enough, I was just talking to James about it earlier, and we in my I think my opinion, my. I'm picking Dan Lincoln as my player of the season, but Jimmy Muir is not far behind him. I'm telling you that now because, and I really, this is me being honest, and my only, my my own opinion. I did, I thought he might struggle, Jimmy. He's a little bit lightweight, and I thought he might struggle, but he has not at all, and he's really impressed, and he's had a good season. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, he's so physical, isn't it? As as well, like you know, when (laughs) when when you see what what they're up against, like. And yeah, and Dan Lincoln, I think that that he would be a lot of people's shout, wouldn't he? Because you know, it's been it's been a tough season for him, hasn't it? Without without doubt, and a bit you know up and down and and, and all over the place. So uh, yeah. I think you know, it's um, he, he, I like the way that it's it's been set up and and that everyone's been given that chance, you know, for th- mm-hmm. this year. So I, I, mm. I, I think that's really. Admirable, and it, I mean, it says a lot about the club and the sort of philosophy behind it, doesn't it? That actually, yeah. those yeah. that got there have, have been given the chance then to to prove themselves at that that next level. So, I think that's a really, really you know impressive thing to have done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then before we before we finish up, then Ian, what do you think? Uh, how do you think the season's going to uh, end up for Wanderers then in the last seven games or so? It will stay up and stay well, clear of it all. I'd like to think so, wouldn't you? And mm-hmm. um, and so I, I think these two wins, like the, you know, these two back to back are crucial, aren't they? Ma- mass, yeah. two massive wins, you know, on different levels as well. Both in terms of obviously the points, but then the momentum that that gives you and, and the confidence that, that that gives you. And I, I had a little look at the the fixtures earlier on actually, and and when you look at what we've got left, there isn't anything there that you think is anything less. Than, than a 50-50, I wouldn't say. Mm-hmm. So if right. you can pick up, what what do you think? Another two, three wins? Like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. say three wins. Another yeah. three more wins. Yeah, yeah three oh. more wins. I'm I'm saying 51 points, I'm thinking that'd be safe. There'd be 51, 52 points, I think, Dawkins would be safe with. Yeah, I generally think- people have said the benchmark is to staying up is about 50 points, and that's... I think we're forty three now, Gaz. So that's that's yeah. two, three more wins, mate, and then we're yeah. two, you know. Two so more I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna back us to to do it. I I think we will. Like I think it might be a little bit up and down, mightn't it? But I mean, what what, what did Mark say last week about? Wasn't he talking about going out and trying to just win every game we've got left? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 
you know, yeah. you might as well, aren't you? Like, so yeah. um, I'll, uh, I'm going with us, with us staying up. Yeah. Excellent. Well done. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I mean. Well, on that positive note, we'll end it there. Thanks very much for giving up your evening, Ian. We really appreciate it. And hopefully you get back down to Meadowbank either soon or next season and we'll still be in the National League. Yeah, yeah. And, and if it's, if someone at the club's listening and can do something about organising a, a little royston Dawkins pre-season free, yeah. then uh, <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be the dream for me. <laughs> yeah. We'll have a word for We'll have a word, mate. We'll put, have a little <laughs> word in his shell, like. <laughs> that'd be ideal, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, thanks for having me, boys. It's much appreciated. No You're problem. Welcome. Thanks very much, Ian. You take care, mate. Cheers, then. Cheers, Cheers the best. Bye, Thank you. Cheers. See you later. Yeah. Well, Gary, that was really interesting, I thought. Yeah, nice to speak to someone, a local man who'd moved away from the area. But he, what I liked about it is he, Dorking Wanderers still gives him his, 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 his roots. And when he says to people, yeah, I'm from Dorking, oh, Dorking Wanderers, that is unbelievable, that is. And uh, yeah. it's good that the club, you know, back in the day, you know, non-league football, you never have that in non-league football. No. Now it's just, it's it's crazy. And uh, especially with his head teacher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> being, and, that's, being a Dorking and the, lady. But the, the coverage and everything is all there at the touch of a button, isn't it? You know, you can find yes. out all of these things and we're so connected now as well. And that, you know, if you if you like football, and no matter where you live or where you're from, and you happen to mention that's my town or that's and and people have got that understanding, they'll make that connection, won't they? And and Dorking Wanderers are doing that now and putting putting our little town on the map, really, where it come where football's concerned. You know, I, yeah. I I've got my Dorking Wanderers mug that I have at work, and people see that. Oh, Dorking Wanderers, yeah, that's my non-league team. I go and watch them and stuff yeah. like that. You know, and Definitely. and 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 it's, it becomes that talking point straight away. Uh, yeah. and, and people have either been to a game or watched a bunch of amateurs or seen stuff about the club and and it's it's becoming a, a, a much bigger thing now. Yeah, generating a lot yeah. of interest and you see that with the rising attendances and everything, don't you, as well? And all the, definitely. All the definitely, follows mate. That, definitely. that the club gets. Yeah, definitely. Uh, right, before we go, Gaz, uh, we have to thank our sponsors, uh, Complete Carpentry and Build, uh, for their continued support. Um on uh, everything that we do, talking wanderers. Obviously, we haven't got the backdrop today, but we're still wearing our we're still wearing yep. our hoodies, aren't we? With our yeah, we've got, our our on, got on. up on there. We go. Um, yeah. So uh, we thank them again for their continued sponsorship, and um, hopefully everybody enjoys the um, podcast this week. Slightly different, and um, we'll we'll be in touch when we when we've got some other ones lined up. But um, for now, we will see everybody. Well, hopefully, if this goes out on Friday. And we'll see everybody at Dagenham. Definitely. Yeah, definitely, mate. Nice one. Cheers, Gaz. Cheers, James. All the see best. You, Have a good rest of the week. See yeah, you soon. You, pal. See you later.